think we're uh, going on all fronts. All right. We're, 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 we're now recording a podcast. Oh, sweet. Sick. Okay, cool. cool. We're really crammed in here. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, see? Yeah, yeah. This is great. Let's get your van. So the way I usually start this is I fill this with alcohol and then I ask the other person to, to light it. Cool. It's just a big rock. Yeah, yeah. Cement. Yeah, I think it's concrete, like ceramic or something. Sick. Cool. Nice. Well, I appreciate you doing this, man. Yeah, definitely. Thanks, Thanks for having me. Uh, do you want to introduce yourself to my, my followers? Yeah. Uh, my name is Zach Retz. Um, I'm an artist. Um, I work mostly in animation. Um, so, uh, yeah, I do biz dev for animated movies. So that just means painting, drawing, designing, um, everything that goes into the movie. Yeah. Um, Great. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, I guess the way I usually start this thing is like, I, I, people have been telling me I've been repetitive, but I want to say fuck them because <laughs> like I, I just want to talk about the same things over and over again. But yeah, the way usually I start it is like, um, I, I don't want to talk about technique. I don't really want to talk about uh, like how to become a better draftsman or anything. I want to talk about like the why of doing it. You mm-hmm. know, and, like you lived in upstate New York, and I'm assuming you grew up there. And, Mm-hmm. You know, you left home to come to Los Angeles to work in movies and games. Yeah. You know, and you've been pretty successful at it for the past six, seven years, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess, like, you know, you're somebody who's had some amount of success in a career that a lot of people want to try and be su- successful in, you know? Mm-hmm. And I'm always curious about, like, what was the, like, what were the um, hard parts of your job, you know, like, getting to where you're at? What are the hard parts right now? What are the parts that you really like doing? Why do you keep doing it? Like, do you want to keep doing it? You know, like all, all this, all, all those sorts of things. You yeah. Know? Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. I think it, it is super hard to get into. Um, I think, um, yes, yeah, especially like for me growing up in, up in upstate New York, I'm not around that, that environment at all. Um, so I didn't really realize that this was like a career I could do till like, you know, part, part way through college. Um, and then trying to figure out like, how can I do that? Like, how can I get noticed? Um, you know, I was applying to every, every studio for internships, jobs, everything for years and yeah. no, not even a single response. Yeah. <laughs> and then, um, I was like, super determined to like make it happen i was like how how can i do this i'm just gonna get so good i'm gonna be better than the people yeah. working in the studios like uh they're gonna have to hire me so like i had that attitude for a while and um like i just was i was getting up at 4 a.m yeah um studying um doing art posting it online I did that for a while and um then eventually i started to get noticed people in the industry started reaching out to me yeah. um and then um then i started getting job offers it was like um blue sky and real effects they they started to like offer me jobs and i ended up taking the job at real effects yeah. and then um i moved to la from upstate new york and um, I've been here ever since. Yeah. Um, well, I, mean, I guess, I, I mean, it, to me, that seems like a really common thing where people, like, they had a moment as a student where they weren't getting any attention and mm-hmm. they started putting in a lot of work and they were, like, treated it like an athletic pursuit or something, you know, yeah. like training really hard. And um, I, I guess the question I ask a lot of people is, like, do you think you would recommend that sort of lifestyle for, for people? Um, it was a lot of sacrifice, like I didn't date girls. Yeah. I didn't go home and visit my family for, for months and months. Oh. Um, I didn't hang out with people. I would spend like weeks in my apartment, just, just working. And, um, that's not for everyone. Um, I think I, I just wanted it so bad. I just, I was like, I, I have nothing else I can do. Like yeah. I'm. I'm an artist. I'm going to be successful at this. Um, I need to do it. Um, 
yeah so for me there was there was no other choice i had to make it happen i think um i i would not be happy if um if this didn't work out yeah and i had to like like teach or because i was like substitute teaching to make a little bit of money um or like i I used to work at a coffee shop um like if i was doing that for the rest of my life i would not be happy so yeah well and I, I guess the thing i've been trying like you know i've been living a really simple life for the mm-hmm. past five months you know i'm in an apartment now and i'm trying to like find the balance but for the past five months i've lived in this space you can see it's like <laughs> 20 square feet or something yeah it's a fucking mess it's, it's about the size there. of my uh fancy la apartment <laughs> <laughs> um uh, but I guess you can't stand up in this. <laughs> so I have the slight, I have the slight advantage over. Uh, yeah. uh, um, and I can, well, I could drive this around too. So. Oh, man. It's cheaper. I got ripped off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a New York apartment for sure is smaller than this. But, yeah. But um, I, I guess it's like uh, I've been trying to live like a really simple life for the past five months. Mm-hmm. Like trying to just like, what if I like did nothing but go to national parks and hang out with people I really admired, you know, and. Um, like essentially just choosing exactly what I want to do every day you know and it hasn't been all like it's been really amazing I really really enjoyed it but it hasn't been like uh, we're, we're, we're in a we're in a, um, a parking garage right now <laughs> uh, yeah it's like just choosing what you want to do all the time isn't not necessarily like the the way to having a fulfilling life you know mm-hmm. And part of me wishes I could be the kind of person that could choose to like get all my fulfillment just being somebody who works in a coffee shop. You know, yeah. I think that like I don't know if this is incorrect or immoral or the wrong way of looking at it, but that desire to hustle and work really hard is almost like a curse. I think you know because mm-hmm. it's like it makes you give up things that might make you happy in order to get the like the job or the you know industry work or something. You know. Yeah. When if maybe if I was like a simpler person, you know, I could just like be okay working at a coffee shop for the next forty years. Mm-hmm. Um, like more humble, if I was more less arrogant, you know. Maybe I, I, I you know, I, at least that's the thought I've been having recently. You know. Yeah. It's like I'm, um, <clears throat> I'm like jealous of people who can can just like get their job and then go through life and just be like satisfied and happy and. Um, they're just cool with that I'm, I'm jealous of that but it's like it's something like I can't I can't choose like if I'm even if I'm not like at a job for over a year and it's like it's not like getting to that next level or something I'm I start to get anxious I'm like how I need to like how do I make more money how do I right. <laughs> am, am I growing as an artist there's all these things that are running through my head and um it's like anxiety and stress. It's so and, strange to me. I guess it's like, yeah. I mean, I, the thing I've been thinking about recently is like 300 years ago, or 500 years ago or something, you know, we would die at 35 of polio, you know, and yeah. we'd have 10 kids and eight of them would die, you know? Oh. And it's like, you know, and the fact that we get to like, you know, go to uh, like a Mediterranean place and get, you know, I get falafel and we get, chicken you know it's like yeah. we, we didn't have to slaughter the chicken we didn't have to gather the rice or we just do that and like um and like i i still want thing i want and i still want things beyond that you mm-hmm. know it's like if we were living in the 1500s we'd be living like kings you know mm-hmm. um and i don't know it's it's strange to me that like us as individuals we always want more you know um like more success, more money, more whatever, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, that's really interesting. I don't know. Um, cause like I used to think like I went from, you know, making like, like $30,000 in, in New York to then moving to LA, you make over a hundred thousand and yeah. then you're like, Oh, if I could just make a hundred thousand, then you'll, you'll be happy you'll be satisfied but then it's like oh then you get to 200,000 then you're like now I'll be satisfied nope then you go yeah. to the next level and it's like yeah. at some point you need to like think and be like okay more money isn't making me happy yeah so what are those other things that make you happy um 
you know, for me, I've been thinking a lot about this because once you kind of accomplish everything you can, like in the animation industry, it's like you just kind of like stay art directing, production designing these movies. Yeah. Um, is that making you happy? Like you're at the top or do you, um, like for me, I was like, okay, I don't really care about that. What's important is just creating art. Like I'm happiest when I'm making really cool art and growing as an artist. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's like the priority in my life now. Right. Yeah, well, I think it's, uh, like, I, I bring this up in every podcast, I'm pretty sure, but it's, like, you can't force yourself to be an investment banker, you know? Like, if it was just about money, you could just, like, oh, I'm going to, like, maximize myself in the stock market or something, or cryptocurrency or something. Yeah. But you can't just, like, decide one day, I'm going to be a stockbroker, and that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to really care about it, you know? Mm-hmm. You just can't. You just can't. You know, you'd rather draw pictures, you know? Yeah. And, um... For me, it's like finding the balance between the meaning and the money, you know, because you need money to survive and having money is really useful. But mm-hmm. at a certain point, like there are diminishing returns on how much money can help your life. Like, mm-hmm. We were talking about it before we started recording. Like, you know, going from $30,000 to $100,000 is a giant leap in your quality of life. But going from $100,000 to $200,000 is not that big of a leap. Going from like and I, I, I would think that going from 500000 to $10 million would probably not improve your life that much. You know? I guess $10 million to $50 million or a billion is like, how much does that really improve your life? You know? yeah. And it's like, um, I don't think food, gets, get, food does not get tastier you know, once you have more money. It's yeah. like you can have more, more expensive food, but you can only have a few meals per day. You know? And creme brulee is tasty, but if you have that for every meal, you're going to die, you know? Um. Um, yeah, something that's interesting, like, um, like I grew up, both my parents made minimum wage. Um, yeah. And then my dad went back to school. He became an art teacher. So it was very humble. We, we, I was born into, like, a small little apartment. Then we moved into a little house in upstate New York. And... Um, so growing up, like, like we were we were always talking about like money, like it, money was always an issue. Yeah. Um, it was like um, if I wanted anything, I remember I wanted to get a guitar when I was like eight years old. I wanted to play guitar. Um, I did. I ended up working at a farm, growing pumpkins and selling the pumpkins um, yeah. in the fall to like make enough money to buy that guitar. So anything I had, I had to like work super hard for it as a kid and growing up really humble um like now it's like if i go out to eat it's like a really special occasion because i rarely go out to eat and if, if i eat at like a semi fancy restaurant i'm like oh my gosh this better be like the best yeah yeah this is like some like uh like a, some occasion you know yeah um but like if you have just tons like unlimited money to like buy the best meal every single meal or have someone cook it for you or something then like you're you're you don't um that's not like uh fulfilling it doesn't feel like you earned it right yeah yeah it's not special anymore yeah Um, well i think it's like my dad used to tell me the story about when he was a kid uh the charlie brown christmas special was only on for like 20 minutes per year or something mm-hmm. if you missed it you missed the charlie brown's christmas christmas special for an entire year so you had to be there on whatever day to watch christmas special app where you could watch it again you know mm-hmm. um and now again it's like now you have everything on your phone and it's all accessible to you all the time you know mm-hmm. and because of that it's like nothing to me feels that special anymore like you have access to all pe- i think it's ultimately better but you there, there's no struggle there's no like relative like um, bar for quality like you have access to everything all the time so the only thing that you're really that's really rare actually is your own attention you know and when it comes to all this stuff I think that like there's somebody who lives in India right now that makes like $5,000 per year and the idea of them making $100,000 a year or more is like 
completely, completely insane. Like twenty times more money than they're making right now. You know, mm-hmm. but they're living perfectly fine lives right now. They're eating enough and they're getting enough water. And, um, they might, on average, be happier than us, making mm-hmm. less money. Um, they might have a nicer family. They might have, you know, like just more mental peace because, you know, they get to leave their job and not worry about it when they go home. Mm-hmm. Um, like the trick that I think that a lot of careers trick people into is like, I think it makes people forget they're going to die. You know, mm-hmm. like the idea of spending more time on an image that you don't care about or doing work you don't care about becomes really silly when you think about, you know, you don't have that much time on the planet. You know, yeah. it's like, you know, I'm 26 now and if I live to 80, I, you know, have 54, 56 years left, 54, you know, certain, you know, yeah. 50, 50, yeah, 54, yeah, 54 years left. Mm-hmm. Um, and with that time, I could either choose to like do the things I really like doing, or I could just like make spreadsheets and do yeah. shit I don't like doing. You know? Yeah. Um, and um, I, I think it's important to have things in your life that you really care about. Like for you to go from living in upstate New York and trying really hard and coming overcoming those struggles and becoming an artist, mm-hmm. they're really relevant to you and who you are. It's part of your identity. Um, but I also think that like at a certain point, those struggles don't define who you are, you know, you're, you're way more than just an artist, you know, mm. um, like, yeah, it's you know, a complicated thing to feel completely fulfilled. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's like, I, it's like you accomplish, like for me, it was like to work in animation. So I accomplished this big goal. Yep. Um, so now it's it's more of like um, finding a good balance in my life, um, continue to grow as an artist, um, continue painting, doing what I love. Um, but I can I feel like I can kind of like calm down a little bit. I don't have to like get up at four a.m. every day now. Yeah, I can like um, I know you like to bike. I like to go for like bike rides and. Yeah enjoy nature more and we should go for a bike ride at some point yeah Yeah. definitely that'd be sick yeah Yeah. um i i I don't know again i think that like the thing i repeat to myself every day is that the problem around us isn't the lack of meaning in the world like you can go find an incredible amount of meaning and just like working in a coffee shop or planting a you know a tree or Mm -hmm. just walking down the street and looking at the birds or you know like whatever it's like even here like if we decided to go and learn how these pipes were put into the concrete, that's probably like a lifetime of just learning about that, mm-hmm. you know? Um, it's just our ability to see it as something that's worth doing, I think, you know? Mm-hmm. And we see in such low resolution, it's crazy to me, you know? It's like, I have no idea how to build a van, you know? But I've lived in one for 10 months now, you know? Um, and uh, I think that the thing that makes us individuals is it's more so what we see and what we pay attention to. Like the fact that we could pay attention to anything specifically is it like boggles my mind, you know, Mm -hmm. like we could focus just purely on making images for movies while there are people around us in this immediate vicinity, their entire life is focused on something completely different, you know, Mm -hmm. like law or, you know, the fact that we, um, can worry about making images, but then uh, not know anything about the running water that we take showers. You know, it's, it's just so strange to me. You know, yeah. it's like all of those things required a tremendous amount of work of other people to make it even enable it to happen. And we just don't even think about it. You know? Yeah, there's so many things we take for granted. Um, <clears throat> like if you go, my grandpa had a, uh, like a cabin with no electricity, no running water, like in the Adirondacks yeah and I'd be like man I really miss like (laughs) 
just taking a shit in the toilet and flushing <laughs> yeah, it because like yeah. going out to the outhouse like yeah, just looking at that pit down there yeah. full of poop <laughs> it's, it's a like, poop pit oh. yeah, <laughs> dude, i've been rough. peeing a bottle for a while really is that what you're doing here yeah yeah i peeing a bottle it's <laughs> it's not i don't know if i have a pee bottle here i hope it doesn't like tip over and roll <laughs> yeah, roll, yeah. roll my <laughs> way <laughs> yeah yeah i was gonna ask right. how do you like how do you go to the bathroom in his no wait thing? okay wait no, don't bring it up here. I'm gonna bring. This isn't the bottle, but this is something that's much worse. Oh, is that your toilet? Yeah, right. Oh, that composting toilet right here. Oh, it is a toilet. Close that shit. <laughs> <laughs> Close that. Open. Yeah, yeah. So, so you put a bag in here, and then you poop in the bag. Oh, and then you toss it out somewhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, so that that part stays clean. Yeah. Okay. I thought that was like a painting box. No, no. I'm a Strata easel right there. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah, this is poop, poop box. Wow, that's amazing. I didn't know they yeah. did that. But I don't know. It's like. It's like amazing that we have running water. Yeah. It's like surreal that like you could just like flip a switch and you know, mm -hmm. as many gallons of clean, fresh water you want it just comes out of it. You know? Yeah. At least uh, relatively clean and fresh, you know. Yeah, it's a little iffy here in LA. Yeah, yeah. It's drink dr drinkable ish, you know, but I've been drinking it for like seven years and then someone told me I need to filter it. And I was like, I mean, I grew up in the country where you just get water from the well and it's yeah. like natural and it's totally like fine. clean. But yeah. here, I guess you gotta, so I filter it now. Yeah. I started filtering my air too because um, I realized I feel sick all the time. So I got an air purifier and I turned it on and it was like all red, all yeah. the alarms were going off. So it's like, this is the worst air you could be breathing. Yeah like oh man i've just been killing myself in yeah. la right it's pretty gnarly here I mean, yeah it's like i mean i'm sure like doing this in a parking garage is probably not good for our lungs you know? yeah. <laughs> it's like how much exhaust just gets like left out in this, in this place yeah probably a lot right probably yeah um and um i don't know for some reason it's, it's worth it to live in a city uh, i think for a little bit yeah, I, was in, it. I lived in New York City for about seven months, and I liked it. Mm -hmm. I just like, rode my bike a lot, and you know, it was enjoyable, but you know, I don't know if I could live there full-time for my entire life. No. Um, I guess the thing that I'm trying to do is, like, I, I recognize that I really like this kind of living, like, super simple, like, pee in a bottle, you know, you know poop in a little box container. Uh -huh. thing. Um, but uh, it's not all I want to do. You know, and I've looked at apartment living and, you know, like living like a more conventional stationary life is kind of like um, inferior to this way of living because I don't get to go to Yosemite whenever I want or go to you know, Mexico, you know, just on a whim. Mm -hmm. But if it's true that there's an entire there's so many like meaningful things around us at all times, like I'm trying to find a way of seeing that as it relates to where I'm going to be living. Mm -hmm. If I can find as much meaning in just like living the same diameter and doing the same things every day uh, and going on like mini adventures and still find as much fulfillment out of that, you know, yeah. to, to me that that's like a, um, like a bigger challenge than like driving around the country, you know, mm -hmm. it's like, and I, it, it's to, to me, it seems like potentially a lot, a, like, like a lot more fulfilling too, you know, if like you, you could change a place that in your brain is like you know i was born in san diego i've lived there for a lot of my life it's just kind of like I, I see it as the place i grew up i see it as like my parents house in a sense you know mm -hmm. if i could see it and change it in my brain to something that's like oh i can live a really fulfilling life there then i could do that pretty much anywhere you know mm -hmm. i can live you know um, and find meaning in places that i normally would never find meaning at all you know mm -hmm. um, and it takes like a, um, I don't know, I, it takes like a sacrifice or something, you know? Yeah, you, you definitely sacrifice something, but the reward for living simple, um, I think is, is greater. Um, have you thought about living in a, a tiny home? I have. I, okay. I feel like that would fit you well. Yeah, yeah. I need to figure out how to buy property to do that on. Yeah. I think it'd be 
pretty pretty cool. I mean, I, I think everyone has a fantasy of like. At least the, the people that I hang out with is like getting a plot of land and then getting all their friends to get tiny houses on their plot of land, you know, <laughs> yeah. having like a homestead. Yeah, um, that'd be pretty pretty awesome. Yeah, I didn't show you my uh, solar panel. It's behind it? you. Yeah, yeah, it's that thing. Can I pull it out? Yeah, yeah. So, Ooh, cool. Yeah, so you plug it into this Jackery power box thing, mm -hmm. charges it. And then you, that has outlets, so you plug in your computer. And yeah, yeah. yeah. Plug in, you know, charging a camera, battery right now. Wow. So you, this light. you just throw that on the roof when you're standing still somewhere? Yeah. yeah. That's cool. It takes about six hours to charge. Cool. But you can't live off the grid. Yeah. Totally can. It's totally possible. Yeah. yeah. Have you thought about doing something like this? Or? I have. Um, <clears throat> there's times when it's like, hard to find apartments in LA yeah so I was yeah because <laughs> it, uh, it's it's really expensive here and um, you know when I was starting out um, you don't like when they tell you your rent's gonna be like two grand you're like oh my gosh that's like so I was like five mortgages on a house in New York City or New yeah. York State yeah it's crazy um, I started like looking up how to be homeless in LA. Like, <laughs> yeah. and then I was like looking into vans. I was like, if you get a van, like, is it even legal to like park and like live there? And I guess there's like certain areas. So I was like looking into it. Um, I think now I would like to, um, get a, get a van and travel around the U S just cause I haven't, you know, growing up, I never really traveled or anything. So there's so many places I haven't seen. Um, like Grand Canyon, um, Yosemite, yeah. uh, Lake Tahoe. You should go to West Glacier, Montana. Ooh. It's amazing. Yeah. yeah, it's like one of my favorite places in the country. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think when you, I, I don't know, for me, like my route was San Diego to Phoenix to Grand Canyon to Salt Lake City to uh, Jacksonville, Jackson Hole, Wyoming. Uh, uh, through the Tetons and Yellowstone National Park uh, to West Glacier, Montana. Stayed there for about a week and a half and like lived in a tent city for a little while. And wow. Went through Bozeman uh, and then stopped and saw a guy named Tyler Murphy, who's a, another finer painter. Mm -hmm. Your brother probably knows. Actually. Yeah, I think I know of him. Um, and then went through uh, the, I, I saw Mount Rushmore in South Dakota went through Minneapolis, uh, Minnesota, um, went through Columbus, Ohio, where I saw uh, Ahmed Eldori, he's a, another YouTube guy, uh, um, and then through Maryland and Pennsylvania, where I saw Zongi, Zong uh, and then uh, Brooklyn, and then I left my van in Albany for about a month and flew to Croatia. And then, Croatia, took their trains through Slovenia, Austria, up to Cologne to see my friend Philip, and then from Cologne to Berlin to see my friend Tasman, and then uh, Berlin to Copenhagen to see my friend Heinrich, and then from there came back Brooklyn for about two weeks, and then saw Tad hmm. in uh, Syrac near Syracuse. Yeah, yeah Syracuse, yeah. New York. Yeah. Um, and then went up to Toronto to see Marco Gucci. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Toronto to Detroit to see my friend Dan. Then back through Columbus to Tennessee to see my friend Alex. Um, then kind of rushed through Little Rock and uh, went through to Austin to see my friend Katie and Patrick. And then back through Phoenix. And then I guess that, 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 that was like my whole trip pretty much. Wow. But, that's insane. It's like 13,000 miles. Like, there's so many fucking things to do, man. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. There's so many ways to find meaning. And just like the, the, the thing I tell people is like, there's no like um, career benefit of doing that kind of stuff, but it makes you much more sturdy as a human being. Like, you know, the idea of you losing your job becomes a lot less scary when you could be like, I'll just live in a van. You know, I'll just like do this thing that's like just me going in some crazy adventure. You know? Yeah. 
it's like a place you can always go to feel fulfilled instead of just like tying all of your meaning and validation to a single job or a single position, you know, mm-hmm. um, which I think is, is, you know, it's fine and everything, but it makes you vulnerable to, um, you know, people controlling you or you know, being depressed or mm-hmm. like to feel stuck. I think it's, it's never a good, never a good mindset to be in. Yeah. That's something I learned. You never want to put in all your, uh, just like everything into like working at one studio or something because you're, you're going to get let down. You're going to, there's going to be like shitty people there. There's, you're going to get put on a movie that you don't like. And then, then if that's your everything, then that ruins your life. Yeah. But if you have your eggs in more baskets, um, then you can kind of, be like, well, this part kind of sucks, but I can like focus my energy on this. And yeah, um, I, I, I highly recommend travel for that exact reason. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like there's a reality where you are working remotely completely, but like you're working remotely in your 70, you know? Yeah, it's like you have your you know, your tablet and your laptop, and you're you know, looking at Half Dome while <laughs> working on you know, Into the Spider Verse or something, yeah, or teaching a class. And mm-hmm. after all that traveling do you have a favorite spot montana okay yeah for sure it's montana I just like to go a lot up there what do you for your next trip do you have a place you want to go um i want to do more international travel um i guess when it comes to van trips probably the redwoods mm. you know, spend more time in yosemite and, mm-hmm. like there's so many things in our immediate area that are just like the best mm-hmm. so, like i get like yosemite is amazing um baja uh, Kiwana. Um, it's pretty I found it's pretty cheap to travel too like you know the plane ticket like I was thinking of going to Peru in a couple of weeks and like a plane ticket to Peru right now it's pretty expensive but if you plan far in advance round trip it's like three or four hundred dollars and then the day to day is like ten dollars a day or something so you can like go to Peru and you know wow. just like for less than a thousand dollars and you know have that like awesome adventure and that's crazy um but I think my next thing is like because I, I traveling this way is fun and everything but it's mm-hmm. very very lonely sometimes yeah you know, it's like very high highs but very low lows you mm-hmm. know it's like waking up in Walmart parking lots after it was super hot the previous night and or super cold and you didn't have enough blankets mm-hmm. and having to pee in a bottle in the morning and having to be like secretive so no one kicks you out and yeah. it's just like um it, it's just kind of you know doing that completely by yourself it just doesn't it's not as fulfilling as doing it you know with another person or like like it's not all bad to be in an apartment and um just being in one spot you know there there is like a consistency there that does mm-hmm. and that I, I started to appreciate a lot more after being on the road for so long yeah when you're alone um, I don't know if you do this, but I like, I get in my own head and I start just like thinking about things. Yeah. Um, I'm like, I'll start thinking about things in my past. Um, like people that hurt me, like experiences that like messed me up yeah. and then I'll start, I'll just start going down that, that path. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah do you, yeah, does yeah. that happen to you? For and, sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, I think about uh, you know ways I've been an asshole to people and people that have been mean to me, and, mm-hmm. um, and I don't think you can help it when you're by yourself. Like, I mean, I like um, you know um, I, I think that everyone has things in their lives that kind of haunt them. You know? yeah. I like it, it, I I've met so many people. I've seen so many different kinds of people. The thing that I really believe is that human suffering is universal. Mm-hmm. Like, everyone has shit like that going on, you know. Mm-hmm. And like, I, I know for a fact that everyone experiences that. And the problem, you know, the thing to do isn't to like, you know, for myself not to shut myself up in, you know, a van and isolate myself for five months if I want to figure it out. It's to like, you know, increase my relative scale and my own perspectives on how that stuff played out. Um, like the van this kind of travel does help me figure it out a lot 
you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and I found that there are places I would choose, like, I know that if I chose to be in my van instead of, like, going for a walk, like, you know, I was parked for the night in a boring spot, not, not, not like an awesome national park or anything, mm-hmm. just like a city I didn't know anybody. If I just sat around and did nothing, like, that's, that's where I get the darkest, you know? Yeah. Like, um, if I just sat in the van by myself and just watched YouTube videos, of course it's going to not, you know, it's going to bum me out, you know? Yeah. Um, but if I go and like have faith that if I just walk down the street, I'll find something to do. That's, that's when I would always get, you know, the, 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 I, I, the, uh, that's how I would solve that problem for myself. Mm-hmm. Some fresh air can really help. Yeah. Yeah, like for me, like, it's, like I put so much of like my self worth like into like my art. Yeah. It's like uh, I haven't done any any art that I've been proud of for like a month or two, yeah. and then I started like just beat just yourself getting, up. Yeah, you beat yourself up for it. You don't stop going outside. Um, so I I felt I found ways to to kind of deal with that like getting exercise working out making sure you go outside yeah. um hang out with friends once in a while yeah i i feel like it'd become a lot more spiritual doing this kind of trip and mm-hmm. like i i think that like that kind of stuff happens when you give too much of your one part of yourself too much attention like mm-hmm. you know if you really like bodybuilding but all you do is bodybuild you're gonna eventually become resentful of bodybuilding you know yeah. And I think if you're an artist and all you do is draw, you're ignoring the side of you that's also like, you know, a son or somebody who wants to be somebody's boyfriend or somebody who wants to be somebody's friend or like somebody who like really likes, you know, playing the guitar or, di- or riding your bike or, you know, it's like you're, you're not just an artist. You know? mm-hmm. And when you treat yourself as somebody who's just an artist, it's like those parts of yourself, I think, that you're ignoring, they like get, they get really loud and they start yelling at you just like live a wider life you know stop you know just painting all the time you know and that energy comes out as like depression or anxiety or anger or something you Mm -hmm. know like i've seen it happen at studios where people or just places in general where people like tie so much of their validation to the studio that they can't do anything else other than just be at the studio their entire being is caught up in being a manager or a concept artist or, you know, and they might hang on the words of the promotion, like somebody that might be able to promote them. You know? mm-hmm. um, like one day you'll be a showrunner. It's like, um, like that's like, maybe that's true, but it's also like, um, I think that's a path to like, maybe, um, being, uh, caught up in, just like the rat race you know? yeah um, yeah yes um, yeah I was at a studio and like I wanted to like I came in as a biz dev artist and I was like hey I'd like to um, you know I'd like to like progress in the studio and they're like well you're gonna have to like kind of put in your dues for like they told me like five years yeah. and I was like oh man five years yeah I'm gonna be like 35 like oh, yeah. right. um, I need to do what's best for myself like chase what what's most fun for me yeah well and I, I think it's, it's I think it's fucking stupid that people have to wait for permission to be creative you know? yeah it's like I think that I mean I'm always arguing that people make their own YouTube channels you know cause mm-hmm. like well um there's nothing about releasing on Netflix that is worse than releasing something on YouTube, you know, other than the actual, you know, maybe the marketing of it. Like it's cooler to be on Netflix, right? But they're essentially just video hosting platforms. You know? Yeah. Um, and like, it, it might be harder to make a, a board game based off your television show if it's on YouTube, but um, the tools that we have access to us, like we have better cameras on our phone than were used to shoot Star Wars on, you know? Okay.
No, you're good. Um, That's crazy. I didn't think about that. But, but, That's but it's totally true. true. It's totally yeah. true, right? And it's like the modern, like the way most people consume media now is not like, like people go and watch a movie in a theater, but most people consume media on YouTube. Mm -hmm. Just like more kids know about PewDiePie than modern celebrities. Yeah. Or at least they're on the same level. Like, yeah. Or Mr. Beast or something. Um, and when you think about that, it's like, oh shit, like the modern, uh, means of distribution, they're the same. And the only thing that like separates people is the amount of money behind a project, you know, mm -hmm. but if you can make something without the money, then you don't necessarily need the giant budgets or to be on a certain platform to make something of value, you know, mm -hmm. like to be a showrunner or a director or something, you could just decide to be a director. You know? Yeah. Just just make it yourself put it on put it on youtube yeah, yeah. If you do it through a through a studio they're gonna have their um their executives are gonna have their hands in it um they're gonna tell you you need you need to have this you need to have this and this you need to have like this this thing because it's like popular on tiktok now yeah. i see that with movies they're like we need to put in this dance because of tiktok i'm yeah. like jesus fucking <laughs> fucking make me throw up <laughs> yeah like, and, um, like the fact that you can, you know, you can circumnavigate that and you don't have to do it, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's true. Like there are people online all the time who are releasing creative things. You don't need to work for a big company or riot or any, like, I'm sure you get paid a few hundred thousand dollars a year or more or less or whatever, but mm -hmm. it's like, if the point of all this stuff is to make money, then we should have just been lawyers, you know? Like, if it's about just saying interesting things and living enough, living well enough that you feel comfortable, then you don't, I don't think it really matters what scale you're operating at. You know? mm -hmm. um, yeah, I think that's, that's interesting because we, we become artists because we love art yeah. and then we realize we can make money on it, at it, and then I think it gets difficult because like so much of the industry is in LA and it's so expensive to live here to have like um, to buy like the shittiest house you need like one and a half million dollars yeah. <laughs> right. uh, just like insane yeah it's, it's like, like well the studios don't pay you enough like you, you have to save up for a while like years yeah. yeah and then you're left with this like this tiny little shack yeah, I, I, I equate it to, like, indentured servitude. Because, mm -hmm. like, I mean, a lot of people, like, went to CalArts or they went to Art Center. And on top of the shitty house, they're also, like, $300,000 in debt. Yeah, exactly. Something. And it's, like, it, that's essentially the same thing as indentured servitude, right? Mm -hmm. It's, like, come to the new, the new world and we'll pay for your passage, but you work for us for 10 years, you know? Yeah. But in this case, the interest is faster than the rate you're able to even pay off the student loan. So you're like a slave, you know? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, that's, that's a good thing with things going online or, uh, working remote now. Um, it's like your quality of life can go way up yeah. if you, um, you just, you don't have to live in the city. Um, so I think, I think that's, that's exciting. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can also go online. Like, mm -hmm can work remotely you know it's like um i don't know the um people are people you know like when it comes to viewers the same people that are watching youtube videos are the same people that are watching are watching netflix you know it's just one is fine to pay well and one's not you know? mm -hmm. and i don't know why one is seen as like higher clout than the other you know? like if you hear about somebody getting a Netflix deal, that's like a big deal, right? Mm -hmm. But them releasing a thing on just the internet for free is not that big of a deal, even if it gets way more attention. Yeah. I think that when it comes to the art jobs, there's also like this, like even beyond the making money from it, you know, there's a sense of pride that comes from it from being able to tell people like, you know, it, it's taken more seriously, you know, it's taken more seriously than just like, like I, for me it, it like none of my family members really took it seriously growing up and once you can make a living off of it it's like oh shit like it's it's he was right the entire time you know that there's like a vindication there or something you know 
yeah. which might be more valuable than money. You know, it's mm-hmm. like be able to tell your parents that I wasn't wrong. I, you know, I am, you know, making enough money to live. It's like, yeah, yeah it's, yeah, it's, stuff it's definitely nice. true. Like, um, I, I know my mom told me I should like go into medical. I should do like pharmacy or, um, something like that. They're like, Oh, you can, you know, you, you graduate and you can make 60,000 a year. It's like, but it's like, I don't want to do that, you yeah. know? And then, um, I mean, the possibilities are endless now. Like you can take your passion and turn it into something, something big. Um, like being on YouTube, um, growing that, um, just creating an, like an Instagram social media presence. Yeah. Um, there's, that can just be your career. Yeah. Um, yeah. Um, and it comes out of nothing. It's mm-hmm. like a, um, you know, it just comes from like the validity, validity of your own ideas. You know? mm-hmm. If you could share ideas well enough, then it doesn't really matter what you're doing. You know, it's like, yeah. a, um, yeah, I, I, I don't know. It's the world we live in is so it's constantly just blowing me away by how bizarre it is. Like, the fact that anything is ever made. Um, I, I understand why people are suffering, but I also think a lot of it is self-inflicted. Like, um, like, I guess no matter what you choose, you're going to be suffering in some way. Like, if you were working at Starbucks right now, instead of following the path, you'd, you'd be living like a simpler life. You'd, maybe you'd be able to appreciate simplicity a lot more, but you'd always be thinking about like, what if I pursued animation? You know? Yeah. That's, that's a good point. Like I've been living, like if there's something I, I want to do, like I'm going to make it happen because I don't want to like look back and, um, when I'm like 60 years old and be like, Oh, I wish I did that. Like, what if I tried to do that? Yeah. Um, like I left, I left my job. I left a, like a really like good job in an animation studio to start my own studio because I was like, I'm always gonna wonder like what could have happened if I started my own studio. Mm-hmm. Um, so I need I need to do that. Um, yeah, and I think a lot of people they choose comfort over that. They're like, well, I have this job I'm making okay money like I can support myself like do I want to like work a couple extra hours every day or a few extra hours every week to like pursue this other thing that there's a chance it might not work out like I feel like most people are gonna be like no I don't want to do that um that's why once in a while you get someone like Elon Musk or um the Apple guy Steve Um, yeah I, I think you can take it too far like he killed himself yeah um i mean his i think his choices his yeah. choices led to that yeah um well, I, I, yeah. I i really think there's a balance because i i the thing i'm learning is that you don't have to necessarily give up success and comfort but um it takes following it it's like doing it in the right way you know it's like um, you can't have money and also have a filling life but you need to like give up you need to like delay gratification you know Mm -hmm. because you know maybe steve jobs could have created something that um would have been really really successful but way slower Mm -hmm. um but he would have lived day to day a lot more pleasant of a life you know yeah um and uh again it, it, it always goes back to um like ego and stuff. Like, mm-hmm. I think the reason people make those decisions of working eight hours a week or any, you know, for 20 years to build something, it's not necessarily out of, out of a place of like, I, 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 I don't believe it's good. You know, I don't believe it's like necessarily well motivated to work that hard you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, I really believe it's coming from a place of deep insecurity, like mm. wanting to prove yourself to other people, wanting to like, you know, avoid certain aspects of your life, you know, I think it's important to work hard, but not to the point where you're giving up your own health and your own family life to just to accomplish something great, you know? Yeah. Uh, that's, a, that's a good point. Like proving yourself to other people, like everything being like, you're so, so much of your life is like portrayed online. Yeah. And I know like people, they, 
like they take a trip and it's all about like taking pictures for their yeah <laughs> for their instagram or something i'm just like just enjoy the trip yeah um yeah like it's like how how different would it be if we're not thinking about what we're showing to everyone else yeah. you know trying to like show how how great our lives are online or something yeah um, I don't know. I, again, I think humans are really simple. Like, I mean, you look at the stories that we're trying to tell. Like, Spider-Verse is a very humble story. Mm-hmm. It's like the characters that you're depicting in that story make less money than you, you know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, uh, they're humble. They're, like, well-respected. You know, they're, like, living kind of, like, simple lives. But then the creators of it are almost something like the opposite. It's, like, glamorous and, you know... Um, yeah, you know, I, I think it's complicated, but I also think it's like, um, like it, it's okay to live, you know, as somebody who isn't just trying to go for massive scale all the time, you know, mm-hmm. like if you can find meaning out of um, just being like a farmer on a small pot of land and that be your entire life, then that's totally okay. You know? mm-hmm. um, and I'm not, I'm not discounting the value of going for scale or going and trying to work at a big studio or anything. I just think it's um, important to not idealize it, to not put it on so much of a pedestal to where you give up you know, everything to get there. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, career or studio work is not a bad thing necessarily. It's just like anything, it's, it's just how you look at it. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of... Um a lot of the really, really great artists, they they get to a point in the industry and then they they choose to like move away and like distance themselves a bit because it's like they just got to a point they're like super well known and then they just move away and they they focus on themselves. Yeah. They leave behind this all the politics of, of the studio and they're just like, oh, I'm gonna work on this project because it's fun and it fulfills something and then I'll work on this project. Um, but like yeah just being at a studio and just like kind of selling your soul to it it's um, that's only for a certain kind of person I think well I I think it's a a big part of becoming a fulfilled like industry artist is like acknowledging that at every level the act of doing art is always going to be the same whether you're working on a big thing like Star Wars or you're doing your own children's book or something Mm -hmm. like you're just somebody sitting in a room making images you know Mm -hmm. Um, and you can go from having all the jobs to having none of the jobs overnight you know there's like nothing that is saying that can't happen yeah and um, it's like you just look at it as like a plumber would look at unclogging a drain or something Mm -hmm. or just like doing what you do not necessarily like you know I'm telling the next generation stories or something, you know, or some corporate nonsense that people tell each other. Like, um, I think that, um, you know, I, I admire, I admire Craig Mullins for that. Cause he like lives in Hawaii and just like, you know, he works on things, but he, I heard him talk and he said he, he equates himself to more of a plumber or, or like, like an electrician than an artist. You know? mm-hmm. Um, like you're just solving like visual problems, like a visual designer, like a visual engineer or something. Mm-hmm. You know? um, and there, there's not really much glory in that, I don't, I don't think. I mean, there is, but there's also like, it's not that big of a deal. Like, if you look at the day-to-day of making something like Star Wars, it's probably very boring, a lot of it. Like, mm-hmm. Or Lord of the Rings, like there's a guy that had to um, put together every single piece of chain mail individually yeah. you know, for 10,000 people. It's like, I, you could not pay me enough money to do that thing for Lord of the Rings. You know, I like Lord of the Rings. I'm glad that guy did that. But like, I would not be fulfilled at all doing that as a job. You know? Yeah. Um, there are. Yeah. I don't know. You gotta, you gotta pick. I don't know. You gotta. Um, like for me there are definitely some really boring boring parts of the job but then there'll be really exciting rewarding parts of the job um, 
and I, I, I think that's with any job. Like parts yeah. of it really suck. Parts of it really awesome. Even cleaning toilets. Like <laughs> I'm sure there's an awesome part of cleaning a toilet. You know? I was a custodian at one point. Yeah, just yeah. Putting on my headphones, not worrying about anything. I'm like, this is low stress. I'll just clean these windows for a couple hours. Yeah. Like they're like no one's gonna yell at me. I'm gonna make these windows like the most shiniest yeah, windows yeah. you've shiniest ever seen. On the fucking planet. And then everyone loves me. This is so easy. Yeah. It's like sometimes I think back to that. It's like, man, that was so easy. That was, I kind of miss it. Pretty like, awesome. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah. now I gotta make this like I gotta read the script and then do these paintings that are super hard. Yeah. And then like the paintings will never be good enough for me to like them. Like, I always want to make them better. It's like, oh, this is so hard. <laughs> yeah. Well, I was talking to Morgan about this. Uh, and he was saying it's like the happiest times he had as uh, as an artist or as like a student. You know? Yeah. You don't have to worry about anything. You just like paint pictures. You know? mm-hmm. you just like do it at your own pace. Like no one's counting on you to make this image. You know? It's like, um, which I, I think it's important to like be able to like, be at least be able to exist in a world where you have pressure on your life but at the same time like there is something really nice about living the life of somebody who doesn't have any responsibilities you know yeah it's like um, just getting to like do whatever you want um yeah again th- there are benefits to it I think. yeah yeah I'm, I'm gonna try to like figure out a way to get back to um less less pressure I feel like I just put it on myself it's yeah. probably like mostly like self-inflicted yeah. um like I've been going to therapy for the past like like eight months or something and yeah. um my therapist and like friends around me are always like Zach why don't you treat yourself better like yeah yeah it's like oh you're right I should like I should reward myself for once in a while for uh I don't know well, the thing I tell people is like you wouldn't treat other people as badly as you treat yourself. Yeah. It's like you know uh, whether it's like staying in bed too late or you know just working too hard. Like you would never recommend anyone do that kind of stuff. But you'll do it your, to yourself, like, no problem. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think the way you get out of that is just having perspective. Like, at least in my opinion, like you don't know how badly you treat yourself until you can see like okay. You know, maybe I'm working too hard. You know, you need other people telling you that. You need like kind of a social group to have something to compare yourself to. Or, mm-hmm. Like just existing purely in a vacuum, I don't think is necessarily the healthiest possible thing to be doing. If you want to be like, like not not necessarily a good artist, but just like a fulfilled person. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. yeah, I think you have to to accomplish something like crazy like you definitely have to sacrifice and treat yourself kind of badly for a bit um but then knowing when to like like start to like okay you got to this point now you can start to like um enjoy some of the rewards from that yeah. like you traveling around living in a van pooping in a little box yeah <laughs> like that's rough but yeah. you know you do that for a while and the podcast grows you you meet all these awesome people it's it's worth it and then then you yeah. slowly you like upgrade yeah yeah definitely mm-hmm. and, um the, the thing i was talking to uh, marco about marco bucci mm-hmm. is that like changing a diaper sucks it always sucks but it's like it's not like people still have kids for a reason you know? it's like changing by bi- diapers doesn't it's not a net negative like having a kid is a net positive for you know living that kind of life mm-hmm having a kid gives you way more fulfillment fulfillment than changing diapers to tracks from your life you know yeah 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 I don't know kids are kids are tough I have a friend with um, two little kids and uh, I visited for a day and they're just screaming all yeah, day of course <laughs> it's yeah. like oh I, I, every time I see kids I'm like oh I don't know I don't know, I don't know. yeah yeah like imagine that's that's your life for a few years. Yes, it seems like a lot. Eighteen years. I mean, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. How did you grow up? What were your parents like? Are they um, strict or? They're kind of strict-ish. Um, yeah, I, I guess uh, I played a lot of a lot of video games growing up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 
Well, my dad worked a lot. And, you know, um, my, my mom was around a lot. But, um, I was kind of left to myself for a lot of it. Um, just playing games and, you know, playing sports occasionally and reading books. And, um, I had an older brother and a younger sister, and it was pretty, uh, we were pretty laid back most of the time. Yeah. I hear that if you are left alone as a kid, um, you find ways to entertain yourself and be creative. Yeah. And a lot of those people end up being like artists and creative people. Yeah. So like I, w- I was the same way. I remember just being alone in my room with my sketchbook or Legos and yeah, um, yeah we kind of learned to to be, to enjoy those moments and let those be really creative um, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I, I think when you exist in a vacuum when you have like you know no other way of finding uh, meaning or um, I guess engagement in your life you, you you know that energy goes somewhere like it has to kind of find an outlet you mm-hmm. know and uh, you know I guess I'm glad it's not like drugs you know because yeah. uh, my sketchbook and um you know, playing games and, um, yeah. So, yeah, you could go, you could go down a dark route too pretty yeah. easily. Um, yeah. you kind of have like an addictive personality where you kind of like get into something and then you just go a hundred percent in. Yeah. It's like, like hopefully you don't choose, choose drugs. Um, <laughs> yeah. It just happened, man. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I think life is really strange. I mean, um, I don't, I don't think how old you matters, how old you are matters. I don't think like what you do for a living matters. I just think it's like, do you feel okay in your day to day life? You know, mm-hmm. like even as an artist, even if you had a million, two million, five million followers, the act of doing art is the same at all stages of who you are. Like, you're just sitting in your room by yourself drawing a picture. You know. Mm-hmm. And whether a hundred thousand people are going to see it, or a thousand people, or one other person is going to see it, like it's gonna like it. The only thing that the only feedback you're going to get generally is the likes that you get on Instagram or something. You know? mm-hmm. And um, again, I, I think I mean my, my belief is as artists, I think it's really really important that people find um, meaning in their life other than just the images that they create. Like, yeah. Yeah, that's that's interesting. It's like we're all like artists are always like chasing the, the likes and the following and stuff online, but it's like you pretend that isn't there. Like, what would you draw for fun, yeah. just for yourself? That's probably going to be the best artwork that you can do. Yeah. Like, I I would love if everyone on Instagram just did that. Yeah. instead of drawing like an anime face or like not that there's anything wrong with that if you love doing that then do that but like or like this this fan art or I mean I, titties <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> I mean what if, no like what if all those girls with like butt Instagrams yeah. like yeah <laughs> like what if you did something like you put all that effort into something like productive like yeah. what would, <laughs> Yeah, well, what did you do? Um, well, I, and I think the answer is I have no idea. I mean, I, I think part of it is like it is true that we exist in a community of people. And it's like we all want to share our ideas. We all we all want validation. Like, yeah. But I think that on average, that um, you know, if people were only doing what they wanted to do, we'd have a completely different life. You know, set of circumstances that we have right now. Mm-hmm. Um, and, yeah. Um, it's, uh, how um, how much do you think about social media, and how much does it like affect your what you're doing? I'm probably on it too much right now, mm-hmm. honestly. Like it doesn't feel like I read the comments for these podcasts, and most of them are positive, but then occasionally you get one that's not good, you know. And I you know, I'm not getting a ton of views on this thing right now, but mm-hmm. it's like when somebody comments something it does affect the way my brain works you know mm-hmm. like people have been calling you too repetitive recently and mm-hmm. I'm like trying not to be repetitive actively and it's just like okay that's probably not a good mindset to be in or trying to do something creative you know um, and it's, it's hard not to I mean 
when you look at like we're so we're more well connected than we, anyone in human history has ever been. You know? mm-hmm. Like if we wanted to go talk to somebody in China right now, we could just like call them up on the phone. You know? mm-hmm. We could go find a stranger in China in like five minutes, probably. You know? and just like, hey, what's up? You know, um, just go, like go on Google Maps or something. You know? mm-hmm. um, and the fact that we can do that means that um, anyone can comment on the thing that you're trying to do. They could say something really great or something really negative or. And I think both versions of the high and the low, like people praising you and people not praising you, they're both um, they're both wrong in a sense, you know, because the person that's being too critical of you is like not necessarily giving you enough credit, and the person that's giving you too much praise, they're not seeing what you really are, you know. Yeah, it's like just by the nature of you posting on social media, generally it's a very one-sided conversation, like you're only communicating one way and when you know you're only communicating one way you might be you know like somebody you know again it's only half of a conversation you know it's not necessarily that real you know yeah. um, it's people hiding behind um, an avatar image and yeah who knows yeah. who it is well and, and like putting yourself out there as like a matter of fact like i am doing this and this is awesome isn't all especially maybe as a teacher is wrong because i don't think there's any wrong way to teach and when somebody is like putting themselves out there as a credit on something they're going to be wrong to a degree and somebody might not realize that and take them at their word for 100 percent of what they say you know? mm-hmm. instead of like picking and choosing the things that they probably should be doing you know yeah um, and i think social media is ultimately good but um, I definitely spend too much time thinking about it right now. Um, yeah, you know, something I started doing was um, um, limiting that. So I got rid of all social media on my cell phone. Cool. So I, I can't check it if I'm out or something. And then on my calendar for the day, I have like 15 or 20 minutes designated to like social media time where I'll respond to people or I'll like post if I have something to post. And then that's it. I can't can't check it other times um and that's um that's been really good yeah um yeah i'm I'm really glad that i did that i definitely felt better just limiting it because we need it for our career or whatever yeah Yeah, so it's necessary but um too much of it is is really bad yeah yeah um well I, i i think it's like again anything anything in balance like if you're working out all the time that's probably a bad thing. You, know, yeah. you might injure yourself. You might be not paying attention to other things. Like, mm-hmm. even if you're being really healthy with your body, you still need to earn money. You know, you still need like time to rest as well. It's like, mm-hmm. um, like, you really can't. Um, you know, it, it, it always goes back to the idea that you're not just one thing. You're not just an artist. You're not just a bodybuilder. You're not just a whatever. You know, mm-hmm. you need to like give every single part of yourself enough attention. And, um, like there's no successful that person somebody that and these are people that I consider like successful across all like in, in every way um, like happy family have a good career you know feel fulfilled in their day to day life um no, you're good okay cool um I think those are people that uh, live a well rounded life in general mm-hmm. they're not focused so much on um It'd be funny to be backed up into us. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it's like, um, you know, having the uh, humility to be able to like hand off certain parts of your life to other people that you might not want to. You know? Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Thinking about like being well rounded, what do you do for exercise? Are you staying like active? And I guess. Um, Less so recently, you know, mm-hmm. it's like uh, on the road I was running. Um, and I had a bike, a golden bike I could carry around with me. Ooh. But I guess I, I try to. You know, oh, oh, oh. Dang it. Do you want me to. Oh, yeah. Uh, Should I jump out? And- yeah, yeah, sorry. Can I open this back up? Yeah, sure. 
Um, I think exercise is super important. Um, I did hot yoga for a while. Whoa. Hot yoga is a fucking vest. Um, <laughs> I mean, regular yoga is hot yoga for me. I'm like so Good. inflexible. I'm like, oh, this is painful. We, 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 we should go uh, cycling and then do hot yoga. It's okay. I mean, it's like super intense. Um, uh, yeah, I, you know, actually, I ride my bike. Um, I, I've been wanting to get stronger too, like actually physically just. Mm-hmm. Shit. Um, oh, yeah, I've been wanting to get like physically stronger in general. Mm-hmm. I think, I mean, since, since I've gotten back, I've been pretty lazy. Just like being comfy in an apartment and having a place to sleep. I've just, you know, being less physically active. Yeah. Um, I'd like to run. I'd like to be able to get into like maybe triath- triathlon and oh. stuff make it like exercise a bigger part of my life mm-hmm. um, the, the thing I really like about physical exercise is that there's I, I think there is some amount of like physical dis- dispositions to things but you can't um, argue like you know, you, you know like somebody who works in the art industry might be like might be lucky or something you know mm-hmm. or somebody who works at a certain job like maybe they're an executive at like a bank company or something they might have been given that job by somebody else but when it comes to exercise there's no like every everyone there is suffering everyone there has to earn it yeah um and there's something about that that i really really admire Mm -hmm. Um, it's a very um selfish thing yeah but it's and it's like very rewarding um like just just knowing that you're you're making yourself better, and it's just you. Um, yeah, I've I've made it um, like a part of my life because uh, you need, especially since I'm just sitting all day. I need yeah. to do something. You know? yeah. yeah, go lift some weights, go for a bike ride. Well, and I, I think as human beings, like we're, you know, we we evolved to to be active. You know, mm-hmm. we didn't evolve to sit behind computers and you know press buttons like, yeah they evolved to like go out and do shit you know, to run and chase down gazelles for 30 miles you know? yeah um and uh yeah i mean we, we just don't we just don't do that you know mm-hmm. like, and usually there's something that something that happens to us that tells us like for me i was like getting all these like neck pains um because i'm just like sitting there all the time and like hunched over and painting you know yeah. um so yeah we it's like not natural we need to like yeah we need to like use use these bodies they're meant to yeah yeah well i i think when you like start to study anatomy you start to realize how mechanical your body is Mm -hmm. like your arm is just like a series of like pulleys and levers you know Mm -hmm. it's like literally just like a tendon just like like pulling your arm up you know Mm -hmm. um and us being able to type and stuff is a draw you know it just you know, complex um, mechanisms, you know. If you don't maintain it, they fall apart. Mm-hmm. Like, your muscles degrade, you get weaker, and your tendons get weaker, you know. And um, your body, I don't think you can be a happy artist without uh, being, like, a, a healthy person, you know. Yeah. Like, if you can't, like, I, I, I think that if somebody... Um, I, I, I don't know if this, tr- this is true, but I think if somebody can run a mile and have no problem doing it, you know, that will probably make them a better artist, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, if they can... It'll just make their brain work more efficiently, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, like, I mean, I'm pretty sure that's true. I mean, yeah. I mean, when, when I started getting, like, more serious about... Um, my physical uh like getting some exercise and stuff um i was definitely more happy um my mood was better i could something about just like putting on my headphones just being by myself for an hour and just like destroying myself at the gym and then coming back and eating as much as i possibly can yeah um and then like seeing seeing the results like it's like I'm like 
like before I felt like frail and like, yeah. I could, like I felt like I could just like fall over but now it's like I'm I can like run up this hill like yeah, no yeah. problem I can yeah. like bench press all this weight now yeah. like um like you're turning yourself into like like I was like this frail like a little human now I'm like a little bit like almost like yeah yeah I, know, well, just... I, I think your body also like there's a big part of your brain that is completely subconscious you know mm-hmm. and I think your body can sense how physically strong you are you know mm-hmm. and it could sense how physically strong you are relative to where it thinks it should be you know mm-hmm. and when you don't feel we- strong physically I think you have less confidence in yourself overall like um, when you know you can go and lift a bunch of weight or you can go and run really far or ride your bike really far at a certain speed it's like um it makes like every single other part of your life less scary and um I think being able to exercise well and do it at a really high level um, I think you're good um like it, it I, I don't know I think it just gives you more confidence to live your life mm-hmm. overall like just confidence in general definitely. yeah yeah um, it, 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 and I think as a result like just as a side effect of how being confident in yourself your art becomes more confident you know, you're able to like um, just be more sure of who you are because where you are physically you know mm-hmm. like you don't have to feel self-conscious necessarily you know um, yeah. like when you're proud of who you are essentially I guess mm-hmm. when you have a good self-image yeah and when you're constantly like I'm weak I am frail it's like that might come across in some way and the way you perform your art yeah that comes across in everything in your life it's like um yeah um yeah I don't know I think um man it's crazy when um quarantine happened in LA they they shut down all the gyms and everything yeah. and um, we're just like stuck in our apartments like not being able to like go out and exercise and do this stuff like I was trying to like work out in my apartment and stuff yeah. but it was, it was amazing how quickly my body just like went back to being like I lost 30 pounds like yeah. like that right and um, this past year I've been like trying to like gain that back yeah. now that they like opened up gyms um, but it's like, yeah, it's crazy how fast our bodies just morph to what, what they need to do. Cause if you don't use your muscles, then yeah. you, you don't just, need them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, You're and not going to uh, put nutrients to those if yeah. they're useless. Well, I, I think that the, uh, like your, yeah, your body gets used to what it's doing every day. Mm-hmm. And like the, the furthest I've ridden my bike is I've done a couple centuries. Um, and I've done a couple like cycle tours what's a century it's like 100 miles oh. in one go um, that would make sense uh and like i did a uh, san diego to san, san luis obispo mm-hmm. over the course of a week and um if you told me to ride 10 miles right now i'd probably struggle mm-hmm. know, even though i was doing like 50 to 100 a day for a long time it's like um but now i'm like i i've lost that i've lost that like ability to do it and, mm-hmm. and that that's all that's not doing it just for a couple of months you know and um, I, I guess the benefit of that is like realizing how quickly you could pick it back up and then realizing how slow, you know, like, uh, yeah, like, like it's pretty much dependent on you actually just being accountable to yourself, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and uh, I guess, I guess your body is capable of, of a lot more than you probably think it is. On yeah. Average, you know, hundred um, percent. Like if you want to, build muscle if you have to push yourself like the normal person will be like okay push myself until it it's slightly uncomfortable and then you stop like if you want to be if you want to put on muscle like you have to force yourself past that point where you can't lift it anymore yeah. you have to like drop the weight grab a slightly less one do a yeah. few more drop it do more or like help yourself up and then like with biking you have to like to get to that hundred mile point, you have to like really push yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, it's one of those things where it's like when you go hundred miles, like 
it's generally between two, like the place you started and the place you're going to sleep that night. And it's like, I, I've only done it in hotels, but it's like, if you don't make it to the hotel, you're in the middle of nowhere late at night in the dark by yourself, you know, does that happen? It's gotten close to that. Mm -hmm. But you pushed and... No, you, and you, you don't have a choice because it's like, it's too cold and you might die, you know? Yeah. No gear otherwise. And it's, it's stupid to do that kind of stuff. I don't recommend it. Mm -hmm. It's like, um, you know, like, even when I felt like I couldn't go anymore because I was so desperate and I was so like, I had to do, I had to do it, you know? Mm -hmm. It's like, when you put yourself in the mindset of, I have to do this, when you burn the boats, when you get, don't give yourself another option, you can pull it out of you to go and accomplish the things that you think you can do, you know, mm. or you, you, you don't think you can do, you know? Yeah. Um, and I, again, I think that that's a huge confidence booster. Like when it comes to art, like you're never in danger of losing your life, you know? And sometimes it could feel that way just based mm. on how much you've sacrificed for it. But it's like, there's no point at which like you doing a bad painting is going to ruin your life at all you know yeah um and you know i was listening to alex honnold give a talk where he's like you know he's a super calm guy like, you know alex honnold mm -hmm. it sounds familiar he's a free solo guy oh that guy yeah, yeah, yeah. that guy yeah no. he was saying it's like oh yeah you know because i've worked by nature all the time you know i don't i don't ever get stressed out because like when you are climbing a mountain without ropes like that's way more stressful than anything in your life normally it's like you, you can't help, you can't be anxious once you experience that kind of stuff all the time. Yeah, yeah, that guy's crazy. That's a different kind of human. Yeah, you have to be okay with. <sighs> I could slip and yeah. fall to my death, <laughs> or one of the one of your holds might break. It's yeah. completely out of your control. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know what like how your brain must. Like my hands are sweating right now because <laughs> yeah. I've seen some of those pictures where he's like yeah. hanging like upside down and like yeah, just insane. Yeah. Um, on for for me, it's like you know, I, like a hundred miles a lot is a lot for me, you know. But the world record around the world is two hundred and forty miles a day for eighty days straight. Oh my gosh! It's complete insanity. Like after a day of doing hundred miles, I'm completely like bonked out. I'm completely yeah. destroyed. Mm -hmm. But, you know, I couldn't imagine doing 1.5 times that on top of the 100 miles and then doing it again the next day mm -hmm. and over and over again until you just, like, three months later, you're on the other side of the planet. You know, just like... Um, how... F do you know how fast? 15 you're miles per hour. But. Okay. That doesn't seem crazy, but... It's pretty fast because you're doing it for 15 hours a day or something. Okay, yeah. yeah. It's like every day consecutively you know yeah. it's having to eat a ton of food get enough sleep you know it's just brutal you know yeah um and you must have some gnarly looking legs <laughs> yeah 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 well it, it, honestly it's like it, it you know i don't think it because it's like the same speed no matter what it's not like you're really pushing your legs that much mm, did true. they say that the endurance comes in it's like in your in your elbows and your knees or in your, oh. your elbows and your neck because it's like you're you're on this aggressive cycling posture for so long that it uh it's just like you, your legs get your arms get locked you know um yeah like i think the longest bike ride i've gone is like probably 40 miles in one day yeah um usually i'll do like 15 20 miles like on the weekend or something and yeah i feel it in my neck because you're, you're like this um do you want to do a century Hundred miles. Right. Okay, so a hundred miles in one day. Yeah. Go yeah. so from San Diego to like. Can we here. stop? Can we do a halfway point? Uh, what, like a like a break or. Yeah, like uh, get a hotel. Uh, we we can if we want, but if we start at like six a.m. and then just don't stop, I'm I, I think it's about a hundred miles from here to San Diego, or so. <laughs> yeah, dude. Because I've never, I've never come close to that. You're definitely before. in better shape than I am. I'm, I'm pretty confident. It's one of the. It's definitely like a, a cardio, cardio thing. Yeah. The I, most I do for cardio is go up and down the stairs a few times. I think, like, you know, when I do those kind of things, it's really, it's pretty slow. Okay. Like, um, and it's you. You take breaks. You know, the the, uh, the math for it is is like you wake up at six a.m. You do two hours. 
eat breakfast, take a break, you know, I'll okay. come, um, you know, do another two hours. It's around, you know, 10 o'clock or something, eat again, you know, take a nap or something and then do another two hours. And it's, you know, about one o'clock or something mm-hmm. to, and you've gone 72 miles, you know, oh, okay. it's like, is the halfway point like Irvine? Yeah. 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 Okay. I'm, I'm thinking, I have a friend in Irvine. <laughs> if I'm dying halfway, yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, I'll, yeah, 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 yeah. I'll commit to this. Let's okay, do it. Cool. Yeah, let's do it. Okay, sit. Right. <laughs> yeah, I'll do it on this bike right here. Cool. Can we uh, Can we do like a little, you should do like a video vlog or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I've, awesome. done, I've done a couple of those. Oh, okay. Um, I, I I don't know. So I did, um, uh, I actually did New York City to Syracuse. Oh, yeah, yeah. It was like 300 miles or something. And, uh, I didn't know Tad yet, so I didn't mm-hmm. reach out to him, but, um, like I did, uh, I think the, it was all on a fixie too, ah. or in, in like a really shitty, like, like a bike that was way too small for me for the seventies. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think, um, when it comes to the endurance stuff, uh, it, it doesn't really matter how much money you get. It doesn't really matter how much like clout you get from other people. It matters how you feel about it. And when you do that kind of stuff, you, you can't help but feel proud of it. You know? mm-hmm. It's like when you have really like gone outside and tried your best, you know, you did all you could for that day, you know, mm-hmm. and actually like you're at your limit, you know, it's like, Oh, that's all I could have asked of myself. You know, you know, you, you know of your limitations Mm -hmm. i think that that, that's a that's a real thing to be proud of you know yeah whereas like in your your job your own success is so out of your own control like maybe you are the best artist there at making the best art you can be making but you know maybe you're limited just by uh like managers that won't pay attention to you or not you know Mm -hmm. or the amount of meetings you can get or just uh, the amount of work somebody's willing to give you you know Mm-hmm. Um, and I, again, it's, it's cryptic, you know, getting that kind of success. It's not, it's most of it, is act, it's actually not up to you. It's like a lot of it is luck and other stuff. You know? Yeah. Um, but, but like physical challenges, I think, I think are just completely your, you know, like yours. Yeah. It's just you and your head. It's how far you can, you know, you can push yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Have you met Scott Flanders ever? Who who is he? He's a friend of he's a friend of Tad's. He's a person who told me about Tad originally, actually. Oh, that sounds so familiar. Um, he worked at Riot for a little while. Scott Evolve. Uh, um, I'm sure I know of him. Um, yeah, it sounds super super familiar. Uh, I've been trying to get into cycling with him as well. Oh, so cool! If, if you want to cycle with us, yeah, that'd be fun. I'm down to try that. That sounds fun because I've been thinking about like like biking up the coast or something um i'll show you my route that i took for for slow Mm -hmm. Um, i wish wish this is the point point where wi-fi would be kind of relevant oh yeah yeah we're down in this this cave yeah um have you have you tried those tires that are airless yeah, yeah, the tubeless tires. Mm-hmm. I had a buddy who had a bike like that. I really liked it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, because I bike. I well, when I did go to work, I would bike to work, and um, I would get a flat tire like almost every day because there's like prickers falling off the trees and whatever. Um, yeah. So I got those tires. Um, I got like the, the nice fancy ones. They're pretty expensive, but I I love them because never have a flat tire. They're slightly less efficient. Yeah. Um, but just not having to worry about a flat tire ever is, is worth it. Yeah. I, I've gotten a few flats on these things. And mm-hmm. again, when you're on a hundred miles, like at a certain point, you're just going to have to hitchhike. Cause like, like if you get a flat tire and you're really far in the middle of nowhere, you have no hope, mm-hmm. you have no choice, but to try and flag down a car. Cause, um, yeah, it's like, uh, I mean, bikes are really simple. They're really not that sturdy. Like this is literally just a couple, you know, a couple centimeters of rubber collectively, mm-hmm. you know, hoping it'll bring you, you know, as far as it can. But, yeah. Um, I got Wi-Fi. Oh, okay. Sort of. Yeah, you might be able to get a little bit down here. 
Instagram. Yeah, there we go. So, Santa Barbara. Wow, that must have been so, so, so pretty. pretty. It was amazing. Man. I, I mean, I have, a, I have a bunch of footage from it. I just haven't uploaded it. Not gonna live, but. Um, but yeah, I don't know. It, it's like those kind of trips are so fulfilling. Mm-hmm. Like, um, when you just realize how big the world is, and um, you know, it's one thing to drive from here to San Diego or wherever, but it's a completely different experience to ride your bike there or, yeah. or to walk that distance. You know, it's like I notice so much more. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, I really believe that it's like you know, we just see the world in really low resolution. You know, mm-hmm. That's why we have. Str- you know, trouble seeing things to do sometimes is because we just can't see, like, what would it be like to walk to San Diego right now, you know? Mm -hmm. It'd probably be pretty, it would suck at certain points, but it'd probably be pretty awesome at others, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, going and just seeing the the water and, you know, like, well, when you're riding, you could just be like, I guess we're next to the beach. Let's just go, let's go swimming right now. Yeah. You know, there's a website called Warm Showers, too, um, where it's it's a network of people who do these kind of trips who mm-hmm. they all talk to each other and they all hang out and it these people open their houses up to other people that are cycle tours mm-hmm. so I messaged these people and they just like you know, invited me to stay in their house and, like they fed me we talked with them became friends you know um, and like complete strangers and one uh, this it was this older woman named Emma who's in her sixties who's never really into cycle touring. She just heard about it through like a friend mm-hmm. and then she started doing it and her son lives in San Diego and she introduced me to her son and we, like we're, he's like my buddy now, you know? Huh. And that just came from just like going out and like riding my bike really far, you yeah. know? Um, and like, um, I don't know. You just have these like really positive emotional connections with people just as a result of going off on these adventures. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah there there are some really like nice genuine people out there who who do that kind of stuff and um yeah it's it's cool i think it's most people too i mean i think again if you just open yourself up to that kind of stuff like i'm just constantly surprised by um, Just like the kindness of strangers. You know? mm-hmm. like, um, also, getting away from the city where, I mean, people like here we're all like packed in and like everyone's like competing and um, you know if you get out of here a little bit, I feel like people are become more genuine and nice. And, I also think I think things matter more too. Like, you know, when you're by your when you're desperate for food really you know mm-hmm. when you, you know you're just like super hungry after riding really far like that fast food you get is way tastier than anything you ever could possibly make. like no matter what michelin star chef that's preparing you food like i'd way rather just be totally exhausted from you know exercise and then i eat like a burrito from a small mexican restaurant um dude i've never craved in and out so much until after like a super long hike yeah yeah dude it's the best <laughs> like right? that's all i it want way, yeah and you're completely justified in eating like a you know getting a milkshake you know doing yeah. all that stuff i get like a three by two a milkshake <laughs> yeah, fries yeah. Yeah, devour it in like five minutes yeah. yeah it's like a um yeah i don't know again there's something about putting yourself in physical discomfort that makes life way more meaningful mm-hmm. um, and it, it, it's like a leveling out thing too like I think it's strange in our lives where, like, you know, people deal in the millions and millions of dollars, you know, but it's like, and it's easy to get into, like, build an ego and your identity around that, you know, Mm -hmm. but when you're cycling in that way, it humbles you so much. It, like, Mm -hmm. forces you to face, like, I'm just a person, you know, I'm just one person, Mm -hmm. just one person on a bike, you know, like, out of all these people that are driving past me or riding past me or whatever, like... There's so many things to do other than just, um, you know, just your job. Like, um, the world is a lot richer than than that. I think. Yeah. If you're if you're biking and you 
you're driving like by some like traffic and you got all these people in their fancy cars like honking at each other yeah. <laughs> you're like yeah. haha <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I'm I mean, just enjoying my bike ride you guys are all stressed out because you got to go to a business meeting or something yeah and you have no choice right yeah um, well it's like people uh, look at us right now as, as those people like you know there are people out there that it's like you know, sure, you're making way more money than me, but I get to like do exactly what I want every day and feel completely fulfilled by it. You know? Yeah, it's like that's like a way better choice, you know. But um, I'm gonna try and find the. Uh, I, I did. I did do a little vlog of it. Mm. Uh, my my trip to Syracuse. Oh, cool. Uh, what uh, time of the year did you go? Winter. It was a horrible, horrible, horrible. You winter. rode a little bike like that in the winter. <laughs> it's the worst. A horrible, horrible mistake. Oh my god. But it was it was so bad to where if we stopped, it's like the wind was really cold. But if we stopped, it got way colder. So it's like, you know, no. So when we stopped, it it made us warmer. But when we kept going, it made us colder. So we had to constantly like go back and forth. My friend was so cold that he had to cover his hands with plastic bags because he just couldn't handle. It. Like he had gloves on and plastic bags. Yeah, couldn't, couldn't handle the wind. Yeah, I forgot about that there's a it's a certain type of cold where it just it feels like needles yeah. poking into you because of the wind and yeah it gets intense there well so so in between syracuse or um what's the city right to the, to the right of syracuse hmm. i don't know uh it, it's one of the other big ones uh, uh, uh albany albany For, from albany all the way to niagara falls there's like 200 miles of just bike paths Oh. No, no roads. Literally, just like a bike path, like this big. Dirt or uh, dirt and road. Okay. Um, so you can ride from Albany to Niagara Falls on just like perfectly pristine, you know, uh, bike path. You know? Wow. I, I really want to find this. When did you get into biking? Um, well, 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 I was in England. Um, I was a. Uh, I was living in Cambridge and I was really lonely. Mm -hmm. I didn't know anyone there. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to start, you know, like a couple years before I had done a trip from New York to uh, LA to New York and back in my Camry and, you know, just driving around. Mm -hmm. And I saw people like doing the same trip, but just like on their bikes. And I was like, oh, I want to fucking do that. And then immediately after that trip, I went to England and then just started like getting into it. And, mm -hmm. uh, I got this bike there actually. Oh, cool. This is an English bike. Wow. That reached back. Um, and then I uh, just kind of fell in love with it while I was mm -hmm. there. And, um, pretty much that's, like, I would go to London to hang out with a couple of friends, and then I would just ride my bike. You know? mm -hmm. um, and I started out on, like, the shittiest possible mountain bike you could possibly imagine. <laughs> it was, like, a 50-pound 50, 50 uh, mountain bike for a teenager. Yeah. And I was just like, I'm going to start riding this thing every day. Mm -hmm. Um, rode like 24 miles on it and completely annihilated myself and like, um, yeah I think we almost played it yeah it's amazing it how a, a road bike makes um, so much of a difference with those thin tires you can just you can just go yeah part of me wants to at some point invest into like a $5,000 bike mm -hmm. you know and just get like because I like, like um, this thing's pretty nice but when I talk to my friends who have nicer bikes and just seeing the difference it makes it's like i when i first got into cycling i didn't think the bike mattered at all until i just started getting more and more into it mm -hmm. and I, I could not ride more than 20 miles on that shitty mountain bike but the second i got this i was like did a 60 mile trip no problem you know mm -hmm. and i couldn't imagine what like what i could do if i had a like just one of the fancy biancas or something you know yeah um yeah, it's amazing the technology now. There's so much lighter. Like I've, I have my bike that I got when I was in high school. Still, it's still like a great bike. But now bikes are for the money. It's like they're so much lighter. Um, yeah, they're just so much better. Yeah, yeah, and it's like you know they, they weigh like three pounds. And, yeah, you know, and it does make a huge difference. You know, mm -hmm. it's like um, you wouldn't think it, but um the aerodynamics of it you know the actual like the speed of the bike and all that stuff does make quite a huge difference mm -hmm. the actual efficiency and, yeah. um it just feels better you know mm -hmm. 
and it looks cooler. <laughs> it just looks slick. Um, I, I think if I wasn't doing art, I would probably make cycling a huge part of my life. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't, I wouldn't ever want to be pro, but I'd probably be doing like constantly just weekend trips, you know, right, right out everywhere. And, um, I probably should start doing that actually. Yeah. It's, it's such a great hobby and it's something you can do like forever cause it's low wear and tear on your body. Like yeah. running will, will mess up your knees over time biking you don't have that pounding so yeah um can i buy you a book on, on cycling so, yeah the, so so mark belmont the guy who did the world record thing mm -hmm. he, he's written books about his journeys oh. doing cycling when he was like 23 he decided that he was going to ride his bike around the world mm -hmm. and he did 100 miles a day completely by himself and supported for like six months um and then when he was like 35 decided he wanted to do the world record 240 a day but he was supported for the entire time supported so he had like um uh like an rv following him mm -hmm. at all times to repair stuff carry his gear mm -hmm. give him food you know like so he didn't have to carry that stuff on his, on his person you know? oh yeah carrying all that stuff does add quite a bit of you know effort to to the whole thing yeah yeah i uh while i was in uh visiting tad i got him to ride my bike Oh, I have a video of him running around on it. <laughs> cool. Um, have you been checking out the electric bikes and stuff? Yeah, yeah, those things are fucking sick, dude. Yeah. Those things are so fun. I mean, I, I can't afford one yet, but I'd love to get one at some point. Yeah. They're so cool. Yeah. I was I was thinking if I ever have to go, go back into work and I'm like a certain distance away where it's like beneficial to have like that would be cool to, to do because I don't own a car um, driving in LA sucks yeah. Um, but yeah those those do look fun yeah, yeah they're, they're awesome I mean um, like I, I I would get one just f like for it would be fairly just for fun like no physical just cruise around going yeah. like 30 miles an hour like, it's just it's just it's just like an entertaining thing to do you know? yeah is going to ruin the audio for a moment. Um, I feel like mountain biking would be really fun in those because mountain biking is tough, like going yeah. up those hills and stuff, but yeah. if you can just have that like pedal assist and just yeah. cruise around, yeah. you'd still get a big workout, but... Yeah, uh, I, 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 yeah I think it, I mean, like... I, I don't think cycling has to be suffering in order to, for it to be fulfilling. You know? Yeah. It's like, I know people that like, oh, if you get an electric bike, then you're a loser. It's like, oh, those things are fun, man. Like, I think whatever gets you outside, you know? Mm -hmm. Like, I, I would, I think on average, I'd probably prefer, at least right now, the just, you know, regular unassisted bikes just because it, like, makes me feel better. But, yeah, like, you know, if I only, if I knew I only had a certain amount of time per day, you know, I would totally get one of the electric bikes. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah um and like i've seen a, a lot of kids in san diego they'll have like a surfboard attachment to their bike and oh, they'll yeah. like you know take their electric bike to the beach with their surfboard attached you know yeah um, yes yeah, that's fun yeah it's the best <laughs> yeah i see i see so many of those now it's it's yeah biking for me is still just um for for exercise and yeah. So I don't, I don't justify it yet. But yeah. Well, if if you ever want to come down to San Diego, yeah, it'd be great. It'd be super fun. Yeah. Yeah. Ride a, ride a PCH or something. Yeah. Let's let's try to ride that hundred miles. Oh yeah, dude. I'm serious. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, and I, California's warm year round, so it's not like you have to wait at all to do it. Yeah. Um, the coast is so pretty, man. It's just mm -hmm. like there's so much around me that I just don't pay attention to that cycling just forces you to look at you know? yeah. yeah we've been going for about two hours or so oh wow yeah how when do you usually cut it yeah, just whenever <laughs> it's like you know, whenever we feel like it's both like exhausted the amount of things we could talk about on camera yeah is there any any other subjects you wanted to, to hit I don't know um cycling's fun uh, the thing about going skydiving, oh, 
No. <laughs> Like sky, no, that's uh, that's all you. Uh, let's see. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I don't know. I don't have any impulse to talk about anything specifically. Cool. Yeah. Well, my spine is like okay. curling up okay. here. Yeah. Let's, 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 uh, let's wrap it up. Yeah. Uh, well, I appreciate you doing this, man. Super, super cool of you. Um, yeah. Thanks for having me. How should people follow you on online? Uh, just Zach Ratz, Z A C R E T Z. Um, I'm. I think I'm the only one. So you can just search that. I'm on like Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, yeah, all yeah. of those. Um, yeah. Well, and if uh, they want to learn from you as well, you, you teach workshops and stuff, right? Yeah. If you um, if you follow me on anything, I've got I've got links to my Gum Road. I do. Um, um, if you want to get into VizDev or you want to like lessons on like color, lighting, all that stuff, um, I teach that. Sweet. Nice. Yeah. Cool. Well, I appreciate doing it. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks, man. This cool. is really cool. Sick. Cool. Well, I'll, I'll cut it there. Awesome. This chair is slightly indented, uh, so I, I honestly I, I probably should get people to, you know, uh, do you want to try this one out? Sure. <laughs> yeah, it's way better, right? <laughs>